Welcome to the Million Pound Mission Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Shibley, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and I'm on a one million pound mission. Now, I've personally lost over 100 pounds, and I've applied what I've learned from my own transformation journey to help my hometown clients lose over 35,000 pounds in just five years. Now I'm on a mission to produce over 1 million pounds of results by delivering my best weekly tips, motivation, inspirational stories, and transformation strategies so that you can gain clarity about what you need to do to reach your goals and give you the confidence to take action. And the perfect time to start taking action is right now. So let's do this. This episode is sponsored by Primal Kitchen. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad I found these guys. Their products rock. I'm in love with two things specifically. I want you to check out their salad dressings. There's almost no carbs, no sugar, all paleo approved, great for the ketogenic diet, and their chipotle lime mayo. You guys will thank me for that. Check them out at primalkitchen.com. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Million Pound Mission Podcast. It's your buddy, Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude. This is episode number 96, Deliciously Healthy Eating with Chef Leslie Durso. You're going to love this interview. Chef Leslie just lights it up. Her personality is awesome, and I'm so excited to share her story with you. We dive in on how she became somebody that was going from, you know, she was just interested in her own health and wellness and then transitioned and just blossomed that passion into a career where she's blowing up. She's working with celebrities. She's got online content, special deals going on with the Four Season. It's really exciting to see all of these amazing things and the momentum that she has going on. And you guys are going to love the healthy eating, plant-based, rapid-fire questions that I, I toss out her direction. Uh, she just really delivers in this one. I think you get a, a lot of highly valuable content, a lot of positive momentum, and a lot of energy. So without further ado, here's episode number 96 with Chef Leslie Durso. All right, Chef Leslie Durso, welcome to the Million Pound Mission. How are we doing today? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for having me. I'm so fired up to have you. My audience already got kind of a sneak peek because I've been sharing out your interview with my 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 podcast brother, Justin Shank, and they loved it. So they said, you are a must-have guest, and I've chased you down, Aww. and I'm, I'm so glad to have you on here today. And you have a, a super interesting story, and I kind of want to start there. As I know anybody that's an influencer in health, nutrition, fitness, we all have our, our stories behind that. So tell us the story about what originally sparked your interest in health and nutrition, because I know it started early for you. Yeah, it did start early. And I, I do. I feel like everybody has a really interesting story about why they've decided to take control of their health. And um, I think it's pretty cool. So anyway, I, for me, yes, I, I went plant-based at a very young age. Um, it just didn't, eating meat just didn't jive with me and how I felt. I, I didn't make a complete conscious connection that it was an animal that I was eating. I just knew I didn't want to eat it. And that was when I was about seven. And then as I got older, it became more of a conscious decision for me. And it was definitely a hilarious thing to do in a family full of meat eating Italians, telling them that you're (laughs) this little blonde, um, seven-year-old and saying like, hi, mom and dad, I'm not going to eat meat anymore. I'm going to be a vegetarian. And they were like, what? (laughs) Um, And of course, first off was, no, you're not. And then I was like, no, yes, I am. And um, yeah, eventually they caved. They thought I was going through a phase. And and here we are today, still going through the phase. Yeah, and that's something that that kind of rings true with me because I've got a I've got a seven year old son, I've got a three year old daughter, and that would be the first thing with me as a parent, be like, yeah, this is just uh, you know something that they're going through right now, and and they'll they'll outgrow it, I'm sure. So what what did that look like as you didn't outgrow it and you kept going, you kind of stood firm with this lifestyle choice? How did that adaptation take place where they actually started to kind of get behind you and support you with that? Uh, well. I, I started cooking and, you know, my parents and my family are very, very uh, respective of 
other people's decisions and choices in their life. And so this was kind of the one that I was making. And so they, my mom was great. She got me in the kitchen and was very interested in helping teach me how to cook and um, figuring out what it is that I could eat. And she used to buy me cookbooks all the time and we'd go through and try and figure out how to make stuff. It, it was great. It, it really brought me closer to my mom and my grandmothers and my great grandmother who all had, you know, wonderful, wonderful cooking skills. And I'm so glad that I was taught by these wonderful women, um, this incredible skill. And I'm so happy that cooking is kind of taking off again. You know, it went very out of fashion to cook at home and it, it's definitely back in style. And that makes me so happy. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Do you, do you have any like special memories or like a, a meal that you and your mom or you and your mom and your grandmother used to cook together that was just really like kind of a family tradition or a special memorable moment for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I always remember like one of my first food memories was my great grandmother used to come for like a month at a time, you know, that's old school Italian thing. Like they didn't, nobody came for, you know, a week long visit. It was always like a month or more. And I just have all of these memories standing next to her, rolling out handmade raviolis for what seemed like days, which was probably only a few hours. And she was able to make these huge sheets of pasta and rolling them out by hand that were like the size of an entire dining room table. And she'd plop all the filling down on half of it and then carefully like lift this enormous sheet of pasta back over all of them and seal them all up and cut them up. And it always amazed me how she could do that. Um, And you could just see all of the love and history that she was putting into the food when she was making it. And I think that's the most important ingredient that you can put in cooking is that, that love and passion behind what you're doing. Yeah, and, think, uh, yeah that definitely comes through in your videos too. If, if any of you have been on uh, Leslie's website or YouTube page, you see the, the passion that you have, because I, I feel like you know that you're connecting and you're delivering something that people can use and that you're passionate about that. You're delivering health at the same time. So I can see how that's that's it for me. Well, thank you. But that's the thing that gets me most excited about doing what I'm doing is because for me, food and cooking food for people is kind of my language of love. And so if I can feed you food, that's not only going to make you happy, but actually make you healthier. It it, is just such a joy for me. I mean, that. I get so much out of that. And I think that that's definitely a lot of my Italian heritage. You know, Italians love seeing other people eat and be happy. Yeah. Yeah. I I definitely know a few Italians that are like that for sure. Yeah. But you know, if you can, if you can do it in a way that's making someone healthier and in turn making them, you know, hopefully happier in their life, like what a joy. I mean, yes, you could cook them something indulgent and there's plenty of chefs out there that do that and cook ridiculously indulgent food and things that you should not be eating on a regular basis. And that's great too. You might be making somebody temporarily happy, but to be able to give them something that not only um, tastes amazing and is rich and is all of these wonderful things that you're going to enjoy in the moment, but then can have the lasting effect of bringing more health to your life. So cool. So cool. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So let's kind of bring you up to speed. So we've got this young girl that's made this lifestyle choice and is falling in love with cooking and everything involved with that. How do you go from there to becoming the celebrity chef with a pit stop on Bill Nye, the science guy that I've discovered, (laughs) which I think is hilarious. So uh, how did you go from, from point A to point C there? And then let's talk about point B briefly, because I think it's awesome that you're on Bill Nye, the science guy. That's, that's awesome. Oh, you're sweet. And, and he, he was incredible and very instrumental in, in me getting here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I always loved entertaining. I thought that that is something that I would do with my life. Uh, and I kind of took some twists and turns and did some TV and did some modeling and did some, you know, hosting stuff here and there and ended up, um, on this Bill Nye the Science Guy show. And, just thought it was so cool watching him close up and seeing what he could do and the effect that he could bring to these kids, teenagers, and adults. I mean, we'd be shooting stuff like on the street and these grown adults that were so cool would act like little kids because they affected, he affected their life 
so much and got them to be interested in a subject that most people are not interested in. And so that sparked my passion for education. And I was like, okay, I want to teach. I want to, I want to inspire people to be healthier and to, and to establish, um, you know, a, a health regimen for themselves and, and through food. It's like, well, how do I do that? And so I literally like Googled how to start a blog that night and started doing that. I was like, okay, I have to somehow become a chef. And at the time there was no vegan culinary school. And so I just learned everywhere I could. I took trips around the world and worked in kitchens and met people and took classes and cooked with friends, grandmothers and other countries and anything that I could do to learn more about food and how food works. And that kind of got me to where I am today. Is that a good enough answer? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I think, I've, I've been talking lately about just a phrase that I've been using is, is you grab your goal, you put it inside your heart and you ignite that with hustle. And yes. that, that's just exactly what you did. That's a perfect example of you figure out what you're passionate about and then you just put massive amounts of hustle and you're willing to let other people coach you and learn and you just absorb as much information as possible. And that's, that's where we get the juice out of life. And so that's, oh, that's super yeah. awesome. Absolutely. I know people ask me all the time how I could find success in so many different avenues. And it's just cause, I mean, I am not the smartest person in the world. I'm not the most talented person in the world, but I'll definitely outwork you. Yeah. I'll put in way more hours. I'll get up at three o'clock in the morning, whatever it takes to make sure that I get everything that I need to do done. Yeah. And that's apparent in what you're putting out there. So, uh, you're, you're walking the talk now. <laughs> I'm super interested in finding out uh, just kind of the story of when you first realized like, wow, I'm, you know, getting noticed. I'm becoming a celebrity chef and I'm connecting with these. That title is people. so weird. That is not <laughs> something that you put on yourself. That is things that people <laughs> put on you. And it's, yeah. I, I'm just a chef and that's what I do. And I love doing it. And I love communicating that with people. And so the putting uh, labels on things like celebrity, is just, it's, it's kind of silly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When was the first time you were called a celebrity chef? Maybe it was like in a magazine article or what was the, uh, the, the context um, there because it had to be kind of like you said it's kind of weird like somebody like announces now that you are a celebrity chef right it's well, like yesterday i woke up and i wasn't a celebrity chef and now today <laughs> is put that on me so now all of a sudden i am and i'm like whoa okay <laughs> you get a sash in the mail and it says celebrity uh, chef on yes it. that's exactly what happens you get a whole welcome <laughs> packet you know there's you know all the iron chefs are there like to greet you and say welcome to the club yes um, no. that's hilarious uh yeah i don't remember remember exactly when it was it was a while ago but yeah. look I, i'm just a normal person yeah. who wants to make good food for people yep yeah. yeah so i've got maybe a kind of a, a little bit of a left turn question here <laughs> what so let's say you're you, and you don't I'm have to name that. names you don't have to name names or anything but let's say you've got like a high profile client and you're trying mm -hmm. to get them to make some healthy changes and they're kind of I'm sure you get some pouty, some pouty clients about it, as I sure do. So how do you attack that situation and try to just influence them to make some healthier choices and, and try this plant-based dish because you know it's good for them and you know you can make it delicious? How do you kind of increase their, their buy-in a little bit to where they're, they're going to give up control and let you provide you know, the nutrition that they really need? Well, they have to be into it. Look. My job as a chef is not to make the best vegan food that there ever was. My job as a chef is just to make the best food. Right. And so when two people, when you're presented with two dishes and one is my dish and one is a super, um, a meat heavy, calorie, fat heavy, cholesterol heavy dish, and you look at the two of them, Mine needs to be the one that you want to eat more than that one and not for the health benefits, but because you know it's going to taste better or it's going to taste just as good, but it's also going to make you feel better. And so awesome. that's the job that I've been charged with. And yeah. that's the job that all chefs have been charged with that want to provide something healthier for people. You can't just make it healthy. I can't just serve a plate of raw broccoli and expect some guy who's been eating steak and potatoes his whole life every night for dinner 
to automatically be like, oh, you're right. I can't wait to eat that raw broccoli every night. (laughs) You have to make it appetizing and you have to make healthy eating fun and cool and sexy and delicious. And that's what I like to do. And I like, um, you know, playing with people's minds on that. I don't try and imitate meat a lot. Instead, I just try and use whole fruits and vegetables to make dishes that you're going to love. Now that, that sounds you know, like the perfect strategy really, because it's, you know, when I deal with somebody that's being kind of pouty about food or exercise or whatever, it's just, you know, letting them just have that aha moment of, okay, we've got simple choices in front of us, but also trying to coerce them into thinking like, okay, this is uh, something that I'm really going to, it's going to benefit me as a, as an entire being. It's going to benefit my energy, my, my uh, lifestyle, my relationships and things like that. Getting healthy is kind of one of those things that a lot of other things springboard off of and try to make that connection. And then we build from there. So I I totally get it. So I feel for you though, because I know, I know there's some, uh, there's gotta be some tough moments when you have to do some, some trickery to convince some people and really win them over. So, and I know you do it. So that's awesome. Um, Yeah. But that word, I I don't want to trick people. Right. 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 I don't want to trick people. I mean, this decision is a very personal decision that needs to come from within and you have to want to be healthy. I kind of like slightly controversial, but I really believe that people live the life that they want to lead right now. So if, if you're unhappy today and you wake up and you're still unhappy and you don't want to be unhappy, that's kind of on you. That's, that's a personal choice. If you want to be healthy and you wake up and you eat garbage you might not want to be healthy that badly. How bad do you want your health? How bad do you want a a slim figure? How bad do you want to be successful? Yeah. And I talk about actually an episode recently talking about, you have to make sure that your why is bigger than all the why nots that you're they're presented with. And, you know, until that happens, you're not going to make those healthy choices. So right. we're, and a lot we're of in line people with that. Put it on somebody else. I'm sure you get people that come to you and they want you to give them the, the answers. They want you to do this for them. And it can't come from someone else. It has to come from yourself. I mean, ultimately you're the person putting the food on the fork and putting it to your mouth. Yep. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's you, it has to come from inside you. So I don't know. Yeah. I think our job is to inspire and their job is to execute. Yep. Yeah. I actually use the cooking analogy a lot of times, which is, is, uh, interesting, but I tell people like, I'll give you the recipe. Uh, you gotta, you gotta cook the meal and, yeah. uh, that's, that's how we do it. So, it. so another thing that I'm kind of interested with, with your story specifically, and it's kind of a selfish question, but you know, my, as, as things start to grow for the million pound mission and all this stuff, like more stuff, more opportunities, which are very positive are kind of heaped onto my plate. But I see like somebody at your level, which is way, way, way out there. Your, your audience is much, much bigger than mine. How do you work on finding balance to where you're able to serve that purpose and really connect with your audience and help people, but also have your own personal, like that health and lifestyle balance, uh, where you're taking care of your own health, uh, your own, you know, personal time, family times and relationships. So how have you worked to kind of find that balance? I know it's maybe a work in progress. It is for everybody, but uh, do you ever think about that? Of course. I think about that all the time, especially as someone who's a borderline workaholic. <laughs> I, mean, I, I could work all day long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week and be completely happy. But I know that I crash and burn when I do that for a certain amount of time. So I do, I really believe in ritual and I believe in routine, especially in the morning and in the evening. And so every day I kind of take lessly time and I do my thing in the morning and I don't look at my emails and I don't look at my computer. I I have a little rescue dog and I wake up without an alarm clock ever exactly when I want to wake up. Uh, thank you to not drinking coffee. Uh, We can go into that later. I grab my dog. We run. I live near the water and we run out onto the beach and I just do some walking meditation and just kind of focus on how I want to feel today and the kind of things that I want to do. Not the 
these are all the things I have to get done today. The how do I want to make the world a better place today? What are things that I can do today to help people? What are things that I can do today to, to make someone smile? Um, I, when I walk down the street, I say hello and good morning to every single person I walk by because that not only makes me feel so much better when I'm smiling and talking to people, it makes them feel better too. And you can help them get out of their rut for the day. And just that morning time when you first wake up is so important. It really sets the the tone for the rest of your day and how it's going to go. And I just, you know, really believe in starting your morning in a peaceful, rested way. I mean, that running out the door, grabbing a cup of coffee, frantic on your way to the office thing is mentally really horrible for you. And if you just wake up a little bit earlier, even if it's five, 10 minutes earlier and you don't look at your phone and you just stand up and you do a stretch or you do, you know, even five big deep breaths. You know, I I read this, I, I meditate a lot and I read this article once about how you only need five breaths to get you into a beautiful state of mind. And you just focus on the air going in and out of your lungs for five breaths. And it's amazing what that will do. If I'm having a stressful day or I'm in the middle of something and everything's going wrong in the middle of the kitchen and it's bad, I'll go into the bathroom, lock the door, breathe five times, and then I can go back out and I can attack it in a, in a sane, calm manner. And it's, awesome. it's really changed my life. And I highly recommend people doing that. Mental health is just as important, if not more important than physical health to me. And so creating that routine of like, okay, this is, I'm taking care of myself and the, and I'm being kind not to only other people, but to myself as well is, is really, really one of the most important things. That's interesting that you brought all that up because as, as I interview more people and I'm talking to very successful people and inspiring people, there are some common trends that I see popping up and definitely investing in time, like you time early is one of them and meditation is another one. So Mm -hmm. have you ever read the book, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod? No, I haven't, but I have heard of it. Yeah. It's, it's great. Pretty much exactly what you described where you're investing time early uh, through things like journaling, meditation, exercise, reading and writing. And it's just, it's something that I've practiced for uh, a couple of years now, it's been a game changer for me. Now, what what type of uh, meditation do you use? You know, I do all sorts of meditations. It just kind of depends on what I'm doing. As I said, I really like doing moving meditation. Just the other night, I went to a fantastic event with a sound meditation with a piano that was really incredible. Um, I've done um, TM, Transcendental Meditation. I mean, there's so many different kinds And it's really important that you kind of like look at all of them if you want to get into meditation and just find what works for you. And you can define something that's your own as well. You don't have to follow all of these rule books. I'm not a big fan of following the rules and like having to be in one thing and labeling yourself as one thing. Um, But yeah, find what works for you and really just whatever it is that can set your mind free to reconnect your, your body and your soul. Yeah, to, to add to that point, I had kind of a funny story from this morning. I was on a call coaching a client and she's very goal driven. You know, we set goals on different things and she had set a meditation goal and her meditation goal was stressing her out because she wasn't meeting her meditation <laughs> goal. I was like, okay, let's, <laughs> let's pump our brakes here and uh, let's just, you know, relax and we get meditation in when we can, but we're not stressing about not meeting our <laughs> meditation goal. Um, yeah. So yeah, we don't, we don't need that. All right. Need that. Now, I, I warned you before we went live, I have cooked up some rapid fire vegan cooking questions for Ooh. you. Yes. So I hope you're ready, Leslie. Um, <laughs> so, um, we'll they, don't have to, they don't have to be like rapid fire, but it's just kind of the cool thing to, to have on a podcast, a rapid fire round. Uh, so hopefully it'll help our ratings. Uh, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Uh, so uh, the first rapid fire healthy vegan cooking question I've got is give me something healthy and delicious that is simple to make with five ingredients or less. What do you got? Rapid fire question. Jeez, Louise. (laughs) Five ingredients or less. 
delicious. Um, <laughs> okay. Five ingredients or less. Um, I would say my quinoa stuffed sweet potatoes. You can find the recipe on my website. Nice. I will link that in the, uh, the show notes and in the blog. I believe I've already seen it also, and it looked delicious. I know I've seen okay. the twice baked sweet potatoes for sure. Those look great. Uh, the sweet or the savory <laughs> ones? The, um, shoot, the sweet ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they've got Danny's marshmallows on them. Who, <laughs> who doesn't love Danny's marshmallows? Uh, they're a vegan, um, all natural marshmallow company and man, they make some really good marshmallows. Yeah. So I think now everybody will definitely go to your blog just because you mentioned the, the marshmallows. We're good to go. They're, we're, <laughs> they're, they're on it. They're, they probably stopped listening and now they're on the blog, which is good. That's fine. <laughs> we'll take that. We'll take that. All right. Just open so, a new window and keep listening to this too. Exactly. Exactly. All right. These rapid fire questions are not going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Um, okay. Rapid fire question number two. What is one ingredient or food that you feel like people aren't using often enough? Mm, my gosh, so many. You know, uh, a cumin is one of my favorite spices, and I use it in fairly unexpected way in dishes that you want normally use cumin in. I guess that would be the spice. So, I love spices. I'm kind of a spice nerd. My spice cabinet is enormous. <laughs> So how would you use cumin in an unexpected way? Uh, I, you know, one of my favorite things to do with it is just a, a version of guacamole and just mash some avocado with some lemon juice and cumin and salt. It's really nice. And people don't often know what that taste is that they're getting, but the cumin just puts this nice warmth on it. And then of course you could throw in some cayenne too, if you wanted some heat into it. Nice. I have a recipe actually on YouTube where I take that and I stuff it into a cherry tomato and make a little appetizer out of it. Nice. Well, I'll find that link too. And I'll put that in there. We're, we're at, we're, this will probably be my most uh, popular show notes episode ever uh, with <laughs> the links to the recipes. People are going to go nuts over that. And I love it. All right. So question number three, uh, what meal are you going to cook for somebody that is kind of skeptical about vegan food or plant-based diets uh, so that you can just blow them away. Like what meal are you going to try to deliver to that person? Hmm. Well, I always love cooking their favorite meal and putting a vegan spin on it. Nice. But uh, probably probably Italian food. Maybe, I mean, everyone loves lasagna. Maybe my homemade lasagna. Nice. Nice. That sounds That sounds like a winner. You can't go wrong with lasagna. That's for sure. No, and especially when you make the homemade noodles and it just melts in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. All right, now let's talk about kids because, uh, you know, I'm a parent of two and vegetables and, you know, and healthy food in general can be difficult. Like they want to eat hot dogs and processed food all the time, you know, and I'm like, all right, we need to get some vegetables in. We need to get some, you know, some protein, some healthy fats and things like that. So, uh, I noticed in uh, one of your videos that I've been scrolling through lately, it mentioned that you had some ideas for, for kids and getting them enticed to you know, be interested in healthy foods. So what, what's a, a go-to snack or a meal or healthy uh, kid-friendly uh, appetizer or something that, that you would uh, toss out there for the, the little guys? Sure. Well, I'll also say getting kids involved in the cooking process is really cool. Um, yeah. I do... Some, uh, something that I recommend to people is bringing them to the grocery store and letting them pick out something from the produce department. Um, my mom used to do this with me and it just sparks so much curiosity and interest and they're so much more willing to eat the item that they've picked out. And so having the kid run around and find like the weirdest thing they possibly can <laughs> and then getting in the kitchen with you and figuring out what it is and how to use it and making up a recipe with it is, is so fun and it just, it gets them involved and then it gets you out of the rut too of maybe just eating the same vegetables over and over again and offering your kids the same thing. And then as far as go-to snacks, I mean, I don't have kids of my own, but I do have six nieces and nephews and I love doing, um, popsicles and I love doing dippy things. I feel like kids love to dip. Uh, and so I don't know, you just make things bright colors and, and they seem to enjoy it. 
Yeah, I love that idea with the grocery store. I could totally see. We might toss a challenge out there for, I always try to give a 24-hour challenge. So if you guys have kids, let's make this our 24-hour challenge. The next 24 hours, I want you to get out to the grocery store with your your kids and then I want the, have them pick out something for the, the uh, produce section and then either go on Leslie's website or go on uh, YouTube or just search and Google that food and come up with a recipe to make together. I think that'd be awesome. So we'll, we'll put yeah, that out you know, there. Too, I was also thinking, I mean, mac and cheese is something that's also super easy um, that all kids love and you can easily put carrots, butternut squash, sweet potatoes, or anything orange, um, cooked and pureed into it. And it's delicious. Nice. You definitely don't need the cheese in the mac and cheese to make it creamy and yummy. That is a ninja move there, Leslie. That's awesome. I'm, I'm going to try <laughs> that for sure. That That's awesome. That's perfect. My, my kids eat uh, a boatload of mac and cheese. So that's that's going into my repertoire for sure. Um, now, I want to make sure that you, you completed the rapid fire round, by the way. Congratulations. That was, that was amazing. I made it. Um, <laughs> you survived. So I want to make sure that we talk about some of the things you've got going on because you have some amazing, amazing things going on with your online courses. And I know uh, some really interesting uh, partnership with Four Seasons. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, sure. Yes. I, I created a partnership with the Four Seasons in Punta Mita, Mexico, which is one of the most spectacular places I've ever been in my life. And I created vegan menus within all of their menus on the resort. And so you can go and have healthy meals available all the time. And I'm doing retreats with them this year. So we created a program that is so cool. It deals with the elements of eating healthy and you can come down to the resort for a two night stay, a week long stay, a month long stay. And you can do this program meeting with personal trainers and taking all these amazing, cool classes, uh, workout classes, and then as well as food programs that have been designed by me so that you can eat healthy, be healthy, feel good in this magical place in Punta Mita, right on the beach and just some of the most incredible scenery that's ever been. If you, if you want pictures, get on my Instagram. I, I always post a ton when I'm there, which is pretty often. And I just, I love working with them so much. It's such a incredible brand to be working with. They're the, the people down there are just so cool. So cool. I cannot say enough wonderful things about working with them. Yeah. The four seasons, that's a huge deal. And that, you know, like they're like the standard. Everybody's like, Oh, it's like the four seasons or that's like a term that people use. So, uh, that, that is definitely huge. You gotta be fired up about that. So, um, now I know you've also got the online course coming out. And, uh, yeah, I'm super so interested also, in sharing that yeah, out. Yeah. So tell us I more created, about that. Thank you. I, I created a partnership with Plant Lab Culinary, which is a vegan culinary school. They've got locations in Los Angeles, New York, and Milan. We're doing a pop-up in Milan, Italy at the moment. And uh, then there's also online courses. So you can be anywhere in the world to take these. I'm finishing up my first online course with them. Now, which will be Italian food, of course. <laughs> uh, and then I'll also start teaching live classes for them as well. So if you want to come to Los Angeles, New York, or Italy, you're welcome to join in person or uh, the classes online are really, really cool. They're very intensive. They're very detailed. Um, you get to communicate with myself and, um, you know, it, it's a fun environment. It feels like a class, even though it's an online class where, you know, you make the dishes and you take pictures of it and you submit them and you can share them with the other people in the class. And it's really cool to see people from all over the world getting to interact on this platform. It's fun. Yeah, I feel like online learning just in the last few years has just exploded, you know, with podcasting and everybody just kind of craving that knowledge and realizing that, hey, I can kind of just find somebody that's doing something that I want to learn or want to do. And I can learn from them directly through a course or a podcast or whatever. And people are just really diving in. So I think there's so much opportunity there. And I'm, I'm super excited to, to check out your online course because uh, I'm always looking to add tools to the transformation toolbox and learning to be healthier and better uh, cook is something that's super important to that. So I'm For very, sure. very excited about that, Leslie. Oh, great. I'm excited too. <laughs> now, uh, I've got one, and I'll be respectful of your time, but I've got one more big question for you. I feel like this is a little bit of a meaty topic, but, uh, you know, I mentioned it to you before we went live. You know, I've got a lot of people that I coach 
where they have the, you know, we, we deal a lot with limiting beliefs. I talk a lot about limiting beliefs and there's a very, very common limiting belief out there that I can't cook or I don't cook or I, you know, don't cook. Therefore I am, uh, you know, subject to whatever food is put in front of me by my family member or my work or whatever. So if you were, you know, just talking to a friend and they, they were saying things like this, what would you say back to them? say that yeah I mean the only person responsible for you is you and so if you can't cook and learn how to cook if you want to eat out all the time find the options that are healthier to eat out all the time if you if your wife does all of the cooking or your partner um, talk to them have a conversation about what it would look like to eat healthier and and get them on board with you and become a, a team about it but you, you really got to take responsibility for that. You can't put the blame out there of like, oh, it's just an excuse. I can't be healthy because I don't know how to cook. Well, <laughs> what a simple little stumbling block. You're letting something as, as easy as learning how to cook stop you from being healthy. I mean, that's just kind of crazy in my mind. Yeah. Um, so you just can't let anything stop you. Like I said earlier, like you have to want this. You have to want this more than anything else. And I think people um, can look for excuses sometimes on why not to do things, but just go for it. Just do it. And it doesn't have to be good the first time. I mean, gosh, I mean, the first dishes I ever made were definitely not good. You have to learn. You have to teach and you have to experience. And I don't know, when you put the energy in, you're going to find that food that you cook yourself so much more satisfying than when somebody else cooks it for you. Yeah, that's a hundred percent true. And I think, I feel like when limiting beliefs start to come up, I almost tell people like, okay, I know you're kind of freaked out right now, but it's almost a good sign because that means you're peering out, out past your comfort zone and yeah. you see this thing and it's intimidating you a little bit and just try it, just go for it. You know, let's, let's toss something in a crock pot. That's what I start with, especially the guys, you know, the guys mm-hmm. really get intimidated about cooking. I'm like, let's put something in a crock pot. I want you to go find out where that's located in your house and we're going to add like three or four ingredients. And guess what? While you sleep tonight, it will cook your breakfast for you. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the, the crock pot is like the, the gateway cooking drug that I, that I use for people. I'm like, you can do a crock oh pot. Oh my God, I love it. The crock pot <laughs> is the gateway cooking drug. That is the quote of the podcast. There we go. We, we found our title, the gateway cooking drug, crock pot. <laughs> So Leslie, I'm so thrilled that you made some time for us. Like I said, our, my audience has already caught wind of you. They are a huge, they are huge fans and supporters of your stuff already. I know that this is going to really thrill them, uh, to get to spend, you know, 45 minutes here chatting with you. I know I'm thrilled and I just wanted to say thank you because it feels so good to connect with people and know that our mission is aligned. And like I, I told you, like you're a part of the million pound mission now. And this is something that I'm hustling. For, oh, I'm put which I think is so cool. And I just have to say thank you for doing what you're doing and giving the support to people that are there and that need it. And I always say like inspiration is only part of it. You, you need to really be there to support people. And it sounds like that's exactly what you're doing. And I just think that that is super cool. Well, thank you, my friend. Thank you. And it's, uh, and like I said, I'm just appreciative of your time because I know that sometimes in health and fitness, you know, there can be like, oh, it, 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 you know, kind of ego can get involved or competitiveness can get involved. But I feel like you're somebody that's out there just trying to get people healthy. And mm-hmm. that's the main goal. So I appreciate you just aligning messages and audiences with me and, and helping me get that, that message out there. I, I'm just really, really uh, excited to, uh, you know, promote what you've got. And we're going to be huge supporters of, of everything you put out there. So I want you to know that. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, ditto back at you. All right, everybody. So I've put that 24 hour challenge out there. Uh, but if, if, let's say you don't have kids, if you don't have kids to go to the grocery store with them, pick out a produce item and, and make that with them, I want you to think about one thing that, uh, Leslie brought up here today that maybe a light bulb went off in your head or you were inspired by or a thought popped up uh, in the next 24 hours. Let's take action on that. Just like Leslie yeah. said, we need to get out yeah. there, get busy and uh, ignite that dream with a little bit of hustle behind it, right? Heck so, yeah, but you don't have to have kids to do that challenge. I challenge everyone that I get to do a challenge too. And I challenge everyone to get out there and go pick up a piece of produce that you've never eaten before and you've never cooked before 
or that you have eaten before and you've always wanted to learn how to cook and figure it out. Yes. Yes. All right. Double challenge. I think it was almost a triple challenge today. So triple challenge. Uh, we are throwing all kinds of rogue things out there in this podcast episode. I did a lightning round for the first time. We, you know, it's, it's all good. We're, we're, it is what it is. I'm in charge of this podcast and I will go rogue if I want to. Uh, so uh, Leslie, uh, I appreciate your time. We're going to make sure that everybody gets connected with you on your website, which is amazing. Her YouTube page, her social, her Instagram is awesome as well. And uh, who knows, we, we may uh, see another round with, with Leslie Durso here in the future. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep uh, putting all the good stuff out there and aligning our message and inspiring the masses. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. All right, my friend. Well, everybody, I want you to get out there as always, take action and own it. Every meal, every workout, every day. I will see you on the next episode. All right, I've got one quick question before you before you take off. Have you taken on my subscribe for five challenge yet? If not, here's how it works. If I've been able to add any value to you with this episode or inspire you with the content, I want you to hit the subscribe button and give me five episodes. Listen to five episodes, and if you aren't inspired, then I get fired. All right, so you can unsubscribe, no harm, no foul, no hurt feelings by me, but I think that you're going to love the content. You're going to love the three shows per week that we're putting out there. So subscribe for five, get inspired, get fired up, and get better results.